Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, this is for my pre-calculus students. We're going to look at function operations and composite functions. So this would be lesson three from our unit six that we're covering. Um, function operations, we'll look at that first, and then composite functions. We're going to be working six examples in this video. So looking up here at our chart, right up here we have various uh, notations here and what those actually mean to do so when you see this f plus g of x right here that means you take your f of x function and you add it to your g of x function so that's called sum of functions because you're actually summing or adding two different functions and realize this could be t of x and um, f of x here I mean it doesn't matter what the uh, letters designating the functions are uh, they they could be any functions but we're just using f of x and g of x those are the two most common uh, uses there okay the next one we have f minus g of x and we need to say it that way f minus g of x means take our f of x function and subtract our g of x function from it and as you might imagine that's called difference of functions we have f times g of x so that's f of x times g of x here and that is the product of functions so we're going to take our f of x function and multiply it by our g of x function we have f divided by g of x which means we take f of x and divide it by g of x and that's the quotient of functions and then we have this notation here this right here and this right here are interchangeable so this is read f of g of x this is also read f of g of x and this is the composite function so this is a very important one that you're going to see a lot. f of g of x, f of g of x. So that means, uh, and it'll make more sense when we take uh, an example and go through it in a minute, but it means you evaluate g of x and you take that result and you plug that back into your f of x function and then that would be your final result. So you basically evaluate g of x for whatever value you're given and then you take that result and you plug that in as the x value for your f of x function and then that result is your final answer okay so that's composite functions and we'll look at these uh, examples and it'll make more sense okay so we have in the following examples assume that f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 3x minus 2 and perform the indicated operation so we have f plus g of x so we're going to do this right up here we're going to add these two functions so we simply write our f of x function okay we can go ahead and remember what we're doing here f of x plus g of x right that's that's what we want to do so we're going to take our f of x function which is x squared minus 4x plus 1 and we're going to add this to it so it's going to be plus 3x minus 2 and now we just combine our like terms so the only squared term we have is this one so it's x squared we're going to put these two together negative 4x plus 3x is minus x and then we're going to put our constants together here so 1 minus 2 is negative 1 so our f, plus, f of x plus g of x gives us x squared minus x minus 1 so our final answer would be this right here that's what we're looking for all right so let's move to the next one we have f minus g of x, so we're just going to take our f of x function, subtract it from our, our, pardon me, our g of x function, we're going to subtract that from our f of x function. So we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 1, and we're going to subtract from that, we need to put this in parentheses, we're going to have to distribute this negative in, we're going to subtract our g of x function okay so we need to distribute here distribute here we can't forget to do that so we'll put all this together we have x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 3x plus 2 combine our like terms we have x squared minus 4x minus 3x is minus 7x plus 1 plus 2 is plus 3 so our final answer is x squared minus 7x plus 3 on that one Okay, these are pretty simple. I, th I don't think you're going to have any trouble with these. I'm going to scroll down here. All right, so next we have f times g of x. So we're going to take 
f of x and multiply it by g of x. Okay, so we're going to take our uh, x squared minus 4x plus 1. Remember that's our f of x function right here. And we're going to multiply that by our g of x function, 3x minus 2. So we just FOIL this out or um, just multiply these two. That's all we're doing. So we have 3x times x squared gives us 3x cubed. Make that 3 a little better there. Then we have 3x times negative 4x. That's negative 12x squared here. And then we have 3x times 1. That's just plus 3x. Okay, now we have negative 2 times 1. That's negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 4x gives us plus 8x. And we have negative 2 times x squared gives us minus 2x squared. So we combine our like terms. We only have one cube term. That's this one right here. So 3x cubed. We have minus 12x squared minus 2x squared. So that's negative 14x squared. Here we have 3x here and 8x here. So they're both positive. So that would be plus 11x. We have a negative 2 here, and that's our only constant term, so that would be minus 2. And our final answer is 13x cubed minus 14x squared plus 11x minus 2. So we just had our, we just multiplied those two functions together, giving us the product of these two functions. Okay, now we're going to take the quotient of these two functions. So all we're doing here is we're going to take f of x. And we're going to divide it by g of x. That's all we're doing. So we're going to take our f of x function right here, x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we're going to divide that by our g of x function here, 3x minus 2. And we could use long division here and divide these two, but it's just as easy uh, to leave them this way. So final answer, we're just going to leave it this way. So that one was really pretty easy. Be a little more difficult if we use long division. Uh, to work that out. All right, we're going to look at two more examples and then we'll be done with this video. All right, now we're back with our last two examples. So our last one is our composite function, f of g of x. So in this case, we're going to take our f of x function and our g of x function, and we're going to basically combine them. So we're going to uh, realize if we had our f of x function and we said, what is f of 7, for example, f of 7 or any number, you would know that you're going to plug in a 7 everywhere you see an x, right? So when we do f of g of x, we're simply going to take our g of x function here and plug it in everywhere we see an x here. Okay, so let's do that and I think it'll make more sense. So we have uh, x squared. So Remember, we're going to take this 3x minus 2, our g of x function, and plug it in everywhere we see an x. So we're going to write that as 3x minus 2 quantity squared. Okay, we're just taking this chunk, this g of x, and plugging it in right here for x. Okay, and then we're going to subtract from that 4 times our g of x function. Remember, we're putting our g of x function in everywhere we see an x and our f of x function. So that's going to be negative 4 times the quantity 3x minus 2. We just plugged in our g of x function right in here for this x, and then plus 1. So then we just evaluate this. So uh, to make this a little faster, uh, realize 3x minus 2 means 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. So we can just FOIL that out or, or multiply it, and we'll get 9x squared uh, minus 6x, minus 6x, plus 4. Combine all that, and that gives us 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. So we can write that over here. So 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Okay, now we need to distribute this negative 4. That gives us negative 12x. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives us plus 8. And then we have this plus 1 here. So now we're going to combine our like terms here. So we only have this one x squared term, so that's going to be 9x squared. 
Then we have negative 12x, negative 12x. That's negative 24x. And then we have uh, constants. We have 4, 8, and 1. They're all positive, so that's going to give us plus 13. So our final answer here becomes 9x squared minus 24x plus 13. Remember, the comp composite functions, we're just combining the two. So we're going to put our g of x at everywhere. We're going to substitute that in everywhere we see uh, an x in our f of x function. Now realize if it asks us for g of f of x, so reversed, we would take this right here, x squared minus 4x plus 1, and plug it in right there for that x. Okay, So it, it could go either way there. In the next example, example six, we're going to apply this, uh, all of these uh, composite, the composite function and all of the uh, addition of functions, the sum of functions, the difference of functions, etc., to an actual graph so that you can see what that looks like. All right, here we are, last example. So they ask us to do f plus g of negative four. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that, we're going to take f f of negative 4 and we're going to add that to the result of g of negative 4 okay so we go over here to our graph and we see that f of negative 4 okay so our f of x graph is this darker line and our g of x graph is this lighter line right here so for f of negative 4 remember this means find when our x coordinate on our f graph is negative 4 and just see what the y coordinate is there. So we go to negative one, two, three, four, and then we go down until we hit our graph, our f of x graph, and that's right here. And the y value there is negative one. So we're just gonna replace f of negative four with negative one. And then we're gonna add to that the g of negative four value. So we find our g of x graph here. We go to negative four, one, two, three, four, and we go up or down until we hit our g of x graph. We're going up right here and that would be a positive one so it's negative one plus one which simply equals zero okay so f plus g of negative four using this as f of x and this as g of x results in zero okay now f minus g of negative five so we're going to take f of negative five subtract that result or we're going to take g of negative five i should say g of, let me redo that, g of negative 5, and we'll end up subtracting that from the result of f of negative 5, okay? So we have f of negative 5 is going to be equal to, our f of x graph is down here, so we're, we go to negative 5, 1, 2, 3, that looks like negative 3, so f of negative 5 is equal to negative 3, and we're going to subtract g of negative 5 from that. So we go to when g, g of negative 5, we go right here and go up till we hit our graph. And that would be a positive 2. So that's going to be minus uh, positive 2. So we can just call that minus 2. Negative 3 minus 2 is equal to negative 5. So our result of f minus g of negative 5 is negative 5. Okay. Now we take the quotient here. f over g of 4. So we're going to, going to take f of 4 and divide that by g of 4. Okay, so f of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We go, in this case, we're going up until we hit our f of x graph. 1, 2, 3, that would be right here, 4. So that gives us 4. f of 4 is 4 over 1, 2, 3. Our g of x graph here, the y coordinate of our g of x graph when x is 4 is 3. Our y coordinate is 3. Remember, our result is our y coordinate. So 4 thirds, that's good enough. We're going to call that, we're not going to make that a decimal. Okay? I'm boxing our answers here that we got each time. Okay, uh, D, we're doing G of F of negative 6. So here we're actually doing composite functions. So we're going to take F of negative 6, we're going to find out what that is, and then so let's do that first before 
I'll talk anymore. F of negative six. So we go over here to negative six, and we go we go up or down till we hit our f of x graph. We need to go down one, two, three, four, five. So f of negative six equals negative five. We need that. Okay. So now we're going to take this value, negative five, and we are going to plug that in to our g of x graph. So we are going to take g of negative five, and that will be our final answer. Okay. So we view it like this. We go to the innermost parentheses. That's where we start. So we do f of negative 6 first. That result was negative 5. We then take this negative 5 value and plug it back in to our g function, g of x function. So g of negative 5, whatever that result is, is our final answer. So g of negative 5, that would be 1, 2. Okay, we go when x is negative 5, go up till we hit our graph, and that's a y coordinate of 2. So our final answer there would be 2. So g of f of negative 6 equals 2. Now this is where students get more confused. These up here are pretty straightforward, but it just takes practice here, and you just need to know what you need to do. Okay, so here we're doing g of f of negative 2. So remember, innermost parentheses first. We're going to do f of negative 2. All right, so we're going to go to negative 2, and we're going to go until we hit our f of x graph. 1, 2, 3. So f of negative 2 equals 3. So now we take g of 3 and that results as our final answer. So 1, 2, 3 and we go up till we hit our g of x graph. 1, 2. So that answer is 2. Okay. Alright, last one. f of, this is just a different notation, f of g of 4. So the first thing we're going to do, go innermost. So g of 4. So g of 4. g of 4 is equal to 1, 2, 3 right here. So g of 4 equals 3. Now we're going to take this result and plug it in our f of x function. So f of 3 now. That result will be our final answer. f of 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we'll call that 4.8. So our final answer here is 4.8. Okay, so the composite functions are going to be uh, fairly new to you and that's where you're going to need to spend uh, most of your time practicing this other stuff uh, I think you'll be able to pick that up really easily and this will just take a little more time alright see you in the next video